Hi, everyone. While we're getting things taken care of to begin with, if you didn't find the handout, it's over on the Westerly by Me page. So it may be posted here on the chat so that you can link there also. But this is going to be tonight called Four Patch Squared Table Runner, and you'll see why in just a moment. So thank you everyone for joining us on this holiday weekend. Um, there is a handout with the fabric that's gonna be required. And then also I have left you that second page so that you can take some notes and you know keep everything together with your um, information for the class tonight. So I call this four patch square because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna make a four patch and we're gonna make another three, four patches. So um, when we put it together, we'll have four, four patches. So that's four patch squared. So that's why I called it that. So I can tell you, this is gonna be one that's really easy to do. It's one that if you had to make a gift for someone, you could put it together rather simply. If I'd have had enough red, white, and blue, I would have done it in that for tonight, but I didn't have that. I had some leftover charm blocks that went together. So that's why I'm using the colors that I am. So if you look down here, this is what you're going to be needing of your background fabric. That's what our backing fabric, excuse me, that's fabric one. I never listed a fabric two, but anyway, all of this is the same. So when we're working with this tonight, you will be using these fabrics and these are all the same. And then here we have your batting pieces because we're gonna be doing some um, piecing together. We're gonna to show you how to do that sashing. So the quilt as you go method is gonna be shown there. And then also the fabric for piece squares. So what I've used here is I've used five um, inch squares. So I used eight of them. And then I've used eight five inch, what are called near solid or solid um, fabrics that are gonna make our squares. So we're gonna be piecing these together before we get ready to do our uh, quilting. We're, I've already done one square, so we'll be piecing three of them together. And then we'll be doing our quilting and then doing our joining. And you're gonna see how fast and easy this is to go. And those of you that have taken my from beginner to quilt class, you're gonna feel pretty um, comfortable with this because you've been doing quite a bit of this. And others, that class is now available on the university, so you can um, download that with all 70-some page handouts. So you can subscribe to that on the university if you go there, look for From Beginner to Quilt, and it will be listed under um, Donnell McAdams, My Classes. And we are getting ready to do that, the Next Steps Quilt, which every day I get more excited about it because obviously I know where we're headed. So. Anyway, let's get to this project. Now, first of all, before we get started, we've had a spammer on here. I've been working real hard to get him off. If you see it, he has copied uh, Donnell's page and everything. Do not click on it. It's spam. It's trying to take you away from us. So if you see him, report it. I think I might have gotten him off, but just wanted you to know about that. I'll tell you, these days, it's just amazing what you get into with what you think you're sharing fun information and then somebody gets in there and hijacks it and oh dear. Well, anyway, 
This is my, these are my five inch squares. There are six remaining here. I had eight, but I want to show you that these were a part of a charm pack. And that charm pack happened to be one that had it cut so that there was a pinked edge. And when I measured it, I was like, this isn't five. So I had to cut off these little slivers on all four of the sides to make this five inches or it would have been bigger and it wouldn't have worked for what I was doing. So always take a check to see, I'm gonna make this trash now, but I saved it to show you that those five inch squares being charm squares were a little bit larger. Now, as I said, we're gonna be making uh, some blocks. So here's gonna be one of our blocks. And I don't know, Megan, where my, blocks are. Oh, I see it all right over there. On the left there, that whole pile. And then I should have some blocks. I should have some five inch blocks, this right here. There we go. So what I'm gonna be doing is putting that there and this there, and that's gonna be one of our sets. So I'm gonna show you how I have been teaching everyone to put blocks together. I have my 60 weight thread in here, which is gonna make it so much easier to stitch over. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay this over this way Now, if your machine tends to eat your first few parts of your fabric, you need to use a starting block. And I'll show you that on the next one. I have my single hole plate on here, and I know that mine doesn't eat my fabric, so I'm able to start right at the edge. I'm gonna keep that joined right there. Now what I'm gonna do with this, this is one block, okay? So when this opens up, this goes together to form a four patch. Now there's no reason for me to cut this apart. I can go ahead and press, and what I'm gonna be doing with my pressing, or what Megan's gonna do with the pressing is, first of all, we always press as it came off of the machine. So this is gonna get pressed just like this, then we'll open it up and this time we're pressing to the printed fabric. Over on this one, we will also be pressing to the printed fabric. Then when I stitch this together, I'm gonna to press this seam open. So I'm gonna hand this to Megan to press for me and we're gonna to go to the next block. So I need two of these and I don't know how my blocks keep getting away from me. Right here. Oh yeah, there they are. I even moved things so that that didn't happen. So I believe this one is gonna go right here. You almost didn't put enough stitches in between there. It's almost sewn together as it is. All right, I'll put a few more stitches. So this is what one of the other blocks looks like. So I'm going to turn this over this way and this this way. And now if I need to use a starting block, if you don't have one ready, the best place to locate them is right in your trash. So I've got a little piece here that I can cut and make it my starting block. Those of you that have been with me a while know I had a pink one. I don't know what happened to my pink one, but I've just got a little piece of fabric here that I'm gonna start on and I stitch right to the edge. And then I'm gonna take these blocks, I'm not cutting that thread, and then I'll start right there. Tell us what brand of weight of thread you're using. Okay, I'm using a 60 weight thread because I'm piecing. I am also using a um, 80 universal needle. 
And the brand I'm using is Signature. It's called Signature 60. And it is a, well, I can't tell for sure what it actually is, but it's called Signature 60. That means it's the Signature Company. And I use 60 weight thread because it's gonna allow me to quilt with ease over my seams, which you're gonna to get to see tonight. So what I do when I get to the end of this is I'm just gonna cut it. Now I could go ahead, I'm not cutting here. I'm gonna cut this off. I could go ahead and seam all my blocks together, but since I have tonight a pressing fairy here with me, I'm gonna hand it off to her and go to the last one here. And as I said, these are blocks that were left over from a charm pack. Charm packs usually include about 40 different blocks. In fact, in the uh, Next Steps quilt, we are going to use a charm pack. And they're all so pretty. Oh yeah, the ones we put on the, if you're interested, you can go to our website, it's listed there and go to quilt kits and you'll see the next step. And we've got some that are options there. It also helps you to look at those so that you can see what the different fabrics in value are so that if you're picking your own fabrics, you'll know what to pick. All right, so we've got these four, three, I've already done one, put together. So here's the one that I just did. You can see that those seams are pressed in the opposite direction here. So now when I go to put this together, they're gonna nest. There's a little tiny thread. You can see it right there holding them together. So they just nest real easy. And I'm gonna use my fork pin right through there so I can get on either side of that seam. And we're going to put this one together and I stitch right up to the pen and before I release the pen I mark this or put this other edge together take that pen out see how we did oh yeah See how we can get that right together there. Now what Megan's going to do this time is she's going to press this flat, completely flat, and then we're going to open this up and press this seam open because we don't want all that thickness in the center. Before I hand it to her, I'm going to do her a favor though and cut that little thread that's joining it because that will keep her from being able to cut it open. There we go. I forgot to do this before I started stitching, so I'm going to match it right here and pin it now. Right up to that pin. So if anyone has any questions, go ahead. We've almost got these three blocks together, so we'll be ready to start our quilting. Um, Charmin wants to know, how many four patches are you making? I'm making four four patches. Four four patches. Scissors, you forgot to do me a favor. I'm time. sorry. Right. So we're matching this together. right to the pen
Oh, yeah, Megan, you did such a good job pressing. It made it look like I did such a good job stitching. Oh, well, that's great. Oh. All right. So now we've got our stitching completed for that. We'll have to come back to this later. But for now, I need to take this off and get my machine set for the quilting part. So I am thankful that it's an easy switch over. I just switch, change my plate there. Take that foot off and put on my ruler work foot. Always make sure you tighten that screw. And then my quilting tonight, I'm going to be using a Madeira thread. And this is the thread I'm using. It's called Arrow Quilt. It's a 3,000 yard spool. It is 100% polyester. I keep my um, bobbins that match my threads on top. And the same with this. This one I actually have a little pin like that. And that bobbin that I took off has a P on it because I use it for my piecing. So I'm not sure where I laid it. I'm, I will be able to find it later though. And as you've heard me say before, your thread, your needles, all of the different things that we have been teaching you are so important. Don't skip those steps. So I had an 80 universal. I'm now getting my 90 top stitch thread or needle out. It's not brand new, but when I, you know, they're not something that I am going to pitch every time I change them. I keep mine right over here in an eraser so that I've got my minor blue and purple so I can see what kind I've got. So we've got a couple different questions that have come in. Um, Michelle wants to know, you, do you use a single hole plate for quilting? I do not. You can. My single hole plate is off to the side so that I get an accurate quarter of an inch. There is definitely a reason for that. So I am not using a single hole. You can see down there, I think probably pretty well that that's wide across there. Let me see if I can get you in there. You can see how wide that is. But if you have a single hole and it's centered and your foot and your needle are in the right position, for example, some machines you have to center the needle in the foot when you go to do ruler work. So that would make a huge difference. And I think I missed it, but Margie asked, do you change your needle? I think you did change your needle. I did right? change okay. it to I 90 top stitch, yeah. And um, Carol wanted to know, this was going back to that um, pressing the seam open. Mm -hmm. She said, why not just spin the seam at the middle so it lays flat? You can do that. That's not a problem. You can go ahead and do that. This makes it so that right now this whole thing right along here is flatter. And obviously I could have done that over here, but yes, you can spin that seam. If it doesn't weaken it in the center there, you can do that. One more. Um, Christine has a Viking. She's asking about bobbins. And her question is, is your bobbin for a Viking minor green and looks and only says Viking. So I'm kind of confused at what her question is, I guess. Okay, I have Viking machines and some of them do use the green bobbin and there are other machines that use a different bobbin. So it definitely depends on which one yours is. If you wanna shoot me an email with a picture of your bobbin um, and what machine you have, I can probably help you out that way. Is the purple needle the same as the 90 top stitch? Yes, the purple tip needle is a 90 top stitch. Great question because I forget about that. And let me show you that when I put this in, I always loosen this a little bit more because my purple tip needle is a little larger at the top shank there 
than my blue one. My blue one is an 80 universal. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what this is looking like after we finish it. It's not finished, but this part of it is, is we are going to be quilting this so that it looks like this. So actually in my quilt, this is going to be the lower left hand corner. We're going to make four of these so that these four will be sashed together to make a four patch squared. So a four patch of four four patches is a four patch squared. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, I've already layered up my back. So I have given you the measurements there. I think this says 11 inch squared and I have layered it up with my batting. Now you'll notice my batting here, I use that heat press batting together so that I can use smaller pieces and not waste. And when I, all of these other pieces that I'm using, I have done that. And this is what it's called, heat press batting together. It's an inch and a half wide. And I can tell you, if you will always use a straight edge and your rotary cutter to cut your batting, then when you go to, head, go to put these together, they're gonna be nice and straight so that you can do that. So now what I need to do is get one of my pieces here and I want to center this on not just the batting, but the backing. So I need to look underneath there and kind of see where center is because my um, piece is gonna need to have a little bit of a border to it. So you can see that this is sticking out over here. So I'm laying that down. I've got extra right here, maybe too much extra. Nope, it's just fine. So I have extra of my backing sticking beyond what the top is, not beyond what my extra piece of batting, but that's just fine. And I wanna make sure that my pieces are laid on there so this is laying like I intended it underneath there. So nothing got turned. You can feel it many times, but I want you to show, want to show you what I'm doing so that you can see that, okay? So now what are we gonna do? I am going to use tonight a six point crosshair square. Now, this is going to give us a little bit different look. You could do this with your eight point, but this gives us a little bit different look. So those of you that are signing up for the next steps, we are going to be using the six point. And what I'm doing is putting it on here so that the wording is right across the top. I'm lining up a center line. There is not something that I'm drawing there. I'm lining that up and then this I will not even need to mark these horizontal lines because that's a crease or a seam that we have in our fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this because I have sprayed these. And the other two, just because I can, I'm gonna use my chalk on it. Now I told you that this is a line and that's a line also. Looks like we've got a question. Yes, yeah, so, and this is regarding, it's actually two from two different people. Carolyn Snow, is the bumpy side for the top or the bottom? I think she's talking about batting. Yes, I'm sorry, for the batting. I have always heard, and I hesitate, and if somebody out there knows the actual, I have always heard dimples up, pimples down. So like this has little bumps on it, so that's down. This has dimples on it, so that's up. So in other words, when you feel this, this doesn't have anything sticking up. It just has more indents. So I've heard dimples up, pimples down. If you've heard different, or you know different, tell me, because I haven't heard any different than that. And then um, 
I'm gonna call SJ, wants to know why is the batting wider than the backing fabric? Because later we're going to, later we're going to be doing some um, treatment to that. You'll see as we get going. If you've never seen how I put my blocks together in this quilt as you go method, you're going to be learning something new today. Any other questions? I don't think we've got any more questions. They just don't want you, they want to remind you to put your glider on. Yeah. I'm over here pressing something right now. Just hang on a second. Oh, there is one more. Christine has, she does not have a six point, but she has a 12 point. Can she use that? I've not heard of a 12 point. But I guess if you have a 12 point, you could use every other one. So I'm using the ruler work glider today. It's the one that does not have a grid on it. It has just the same size hole as the foot. And what I'm going to do, if you don't have the set of simple circles, I can tell you it's one you probably would benefit greatly from. So it looks like this. Mine is obviously well used. And it has templates that are in the sizes of two and a half, three, three and a half and four. And today we're going to use that four. So it's like your simple circles, except they are big. And of course we can use our echo guides inside them to make some other sizes of circles. So the first thing that we're going to do is on this fabric, I am using a gold thread because it kind of blended with everything. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these two fabrics here and see which one could I really hide my stitching in. Because this is what you will start doing as you get more involved with template quilting because you don't want to constantly be burying and pulling up threads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here in this fabric because I think it looks better to be able to hide a stitch. I'm gonna position my template so that it is centered dead on because I'm gonna be making a circle around this whole area. And I'm gonna come right over here to where that little berry-like place, there's a little berry like right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my template, my foot against my template, Take my thread down and bring my bobbin up. Oh, okay. I got it from Christine. It's it's an eight point. She it's twelve inch square. Yeah. She used her eight point for this. You one. can use it. It won't give us quite the same design, but yes, you can use it. Okay. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I am right lined up on all four of these, so this is dead center. And I'm going to just stitch around. And you notice when it comes to those seams, it's not bulking, bulking at all. Okay. Now, when I come back to here, I'm just going to stitch over it a little bit and back so that I don't have to bury those threads. And I'm just going to cut the thread. I'm going to come right down here. This one's cut and it's cut on the back. And I'm just going to cut right up next to that because I overlapped that stitching. But because it's almost the same color, you're not going to notice that at all. Now in my one that's finished, this one right here, I would have noticed wherever I put it over there. But guess what? Down here, it's right here in this flower. I can put this right up close and you probably can't find it very well because it's buried right there. Okay, so right in there, you can see it's in that flower. You can't tell where I did that. And that way you don't have to constantly be pulling up your threads and burying them. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is pretty simple. 
I'm just gonna come right in the center, put my needle down, bring it up, pull up my bobbin thread, put it back down, And I am now going to, on every one of those six points, or if you're using an eight point, you're going to do it eight times. I am going to be lining up to make a circle out this way. So if I turn this like this so you can see it back there in the back, that lines up. This now lines up. And we're just going to be stitching. right back to the center. I'm going to rotate. I can either turn this completely like this so I'm lining up. Remember this line is a line we didn't draw because we didn't need to. So I can either line up that way or I can line up this way. I will tell you sometimes it's easier to do the diagonal because I can see better because there's longer area back there. So I'm going to just use my diagonal. and I'm gonna come right back to the center. I'm rotating it so that you can see how I'm doing this. Lining this up, it's lined up back there. And I'm gonna stop and hold everything in place and get those threads out of the middle because they're gonna get stitched over multiple times and when I get back, I will be able to secure it again without having to pull up my threads and tie them. Right there in the center. This one I'm not using, okay? I come over to this one. That will be what happens if you, you know, using a six point and you've not used a six point before, you'll probably mistakenly do that unless you either put a pin there or a mark or something that says, don't stitch here. Now the next one, we are going to stitch on it because if there weren't the line there, we would have marked it. This would be a really cool one to just use, in this case, this is a nine and a half inch square use a nine and a half or 12 and a half or whatever size you want and do this as a template because there's some really cool overlaps here. Now, when I get back and I think I've done all of them, one, two, three, four, five, six. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of do a little bit of a circle dance there, just a little tiny circle cut those threads and just that quick we have done our design this is where I started and stopped the first one so I'm just going to clip those threads and right here is where I did the outer ones so you can see how this would be a really cool template where you would be cutting out areas two down two to go. So here's another one that I have joined together with my heat press batting together. Always want to make sure I've left enough. And can you tell us again, because there's still some confusion on why your batting is bigger, because on your, on your list it says that it's supposed to be cut to 11. Right, and I didn't. And why? There's because, okay, why. There, don't let that confuse you. I didn't cut mine to 11 because I just had some extra pieces. And you don't know that behind the scenes tonight we had a little challenge getting on. And so rather than take the time to cut it, I got online and then you're right. We, you know, that's why it's bigger. So on theirs, they would want to cut it unless they have like their scraps, or whatever, then they Right. Yes. Okay. The, this, this back square is an 11 inch square. 
and I, you can see when I flip this over, my batting is bigger. I could have cut it exactly. I can see why that could create some confusion for you guys, but that's why it's not cut to shape. I pieced them together and we were ready to get on. So that's why we did it that way. Now this is gonna be, again, my six point. I am using it so that the wording is right up here at the top. I'm laying that one going straight out the middle. I'm putting this on the center here and making sure that this goes right down that line there. And so what I'm gonna do, this line won't show up on my other fabrics, so I'm gonna make those with chalk. So as you're getting ready to stitch this, Linda wants to know, is it necessary to stitch the outside diagonal circles first and then the straight lines, or does it matter what order? Hit me with that again. Okay, so as you're going to stitch here, I think you started last time stitching a diagonal circle first. Is there a reason why, or does it matter what order you stitch your circles in? It matters not at all. Okay. You just got to know that, like, I've marked these, but I didn't mark this one and this one. So there's one line there and one line there that it gets stitched on. This one in the center, you could stitch it last. I just kind of like to stitch it first. And what I'm doing is I'm lining up these lines and this line here. Three lines lined up means that one must be lined up. This is not going to hide that very well. So I'm going to come down to this fabric. And since it's a gold thread, I'm going to put it right there in that gold section. So I'm going to come right to this spot. I'm holding that in place. Needle down, needle up foot up, pull that fabric up or th thread up, and then I just floss underneath there to pull those two out. You might have to get your curved seam or curved tweezers. Couldn't think of the word, you guys. So now I don't know for sure if you can see how gold that is down in there, but that's pretty gold. So it's going to match right there. And I'm just going to Stitch back and forth a little bit. When I get back into this fabric, I wouldn't have stopped out there because that one, you know, it's plain. And if I even bobble a little bit, it's going to show. But I'm stopping there to trim these threads off without letting loose of my template. Come back and just go back a little bit and cut my thread because there's my little flower and it's in there but you'd be hard pressed to find it i'm going to cut this thread off the back first i keep dropping it there we go All right, so now we're going to put our circle in here. Hold this in place right in that center. Needle down, needle up. Come back to that center. Now I'm going to switch over to this because I know one needs to be here and I don't want to forget it. Okay, so I'm coming out so that this is lined up right here, and I've got it lined up in the back. I'm going to the next line. I'm lining back up there. Remember I said on this template, it's easier to do diagonals because I can see it easier. If they don't have this surface template, could they use the circles on quilt templates? Kind of. Yeah, it might be a little bit of a challenge. But yeah, you, could, you can use any template you want realistically, you guys. 
this just happens to be a little bit bigger than what you may already have in your arsenal. And that's why I say I use my circles. I have this, this is the large set, which means the larger sizes. And I also have the small set, which means smaller than the two inch. And let's see, I need to remember I'm doing this one. And I love to use the circles in a lot of different ways. I try when I'm showing you things like this to use what I know you will get good use out of. Because I know you don't want to buy a set of templates for $60 and use them one time. So that's why I try to get it so that you'll have the opportunity to reuse your templates over and over and over. So I've got this one lined up and this is the last one. And like I said, I've already got in my mind, I'm gonna do some things with this um, with template quilting. Now I'm back in the center and it's the last one. So I just went back and forth. Go ahead and cut that thread. Cut it here on the back. And we've got one more. This one is actually cut closer to the 11 than any of the rest of them. You can see it on the edge here, but this end down here is a little bit longer. So I'm gonna sit this on here. Do you want me to press this? Yeah, press those marks off. Now you'll notice that I'm not using any spray basting or anything like that for this. You can get along without that on these smaller pieces. We're good here. For some of you, you might be thinking, I can't remember Megan, if I ha still have the uh, piece over there or not. What piece are you looking for? That what tells what grouping this was. I think it's a Thimbleberries grouping. Oh, let me go look. <sighs> You must have been a shop owner for some time. Yeah, What's this is an old one. It's called um, uh, Thimbleberry's um, Pattern Party. Pattern Party, yeah. So it's an old one, an old, old, old one. Guess what, you guys? It's an old one. It's funny because one that I used, I found out the age of the one that I used to make the sewing machine cover a couple of weeks ago. That was from 2014. So Marge Curtin won the extra that I had. And it's from 2014, Marge. It's certainly not a new one. All right. Last but not least, line up up here, line up here. Lots of gold down here. So we're gonna come right down there, actually. Yeah, that'll be the best. Needle down, needle up, foot up. And our, our, what we've got on the back is not part of the group at all. It's just what we had in our stash. And for us right now, Megan, our stash means about a thousand bolts in the garage that my son and my husband are about to shoot us for. But hey, it is what it is. That's what happens when you have a fabric store. Needle down in the center. And I'm putting this on the diagonal, matching up back there and in the front.
back to the center. Remember, this is one we need to do here. Even though it's not got a line on it. You could do any design you wanted on this and go ahead and create the project that we're going to make this into. Now, I'm going to be showing you how I prepare and stitch these together using the quilt as you go method of sashing. Don't think this one. Yes, this one does get it. And if you do not have that handout, if you go to my YouTube channel, you will find it on there. So Megan, we have pinned the handout on the YouTube channel, correct, for Quilt as you go. I want to say yes. Okay. So if somebody's out there wants to check it out, just go to the All Things Quilting and Sewing with Donnell McAdams and look for the Quilt as You Go method. There's a three page handout that anybody can download. So I'm back to the beginning. You'll notice I didn't have to tie anything tonight because of the way that we did this. All right. Now what we're going to do, and you can do this several different ways. I don't know, Megan, if you see my, there it is. I showed you this ruler a couple of weeks ago. And this particular template allows you to stitch and go through all these layers as if you just had a regular sewing machine. Now I want to do this so that I am putting this at an eighth inch around my edge here. And it does not have to be an exact eighth inch, you guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to test this, and I think I've got it figured out correctly. If I put this so that that would be a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to come off just a little bit and so now and the eighth does not have to be inexact it just has to be less than a quarter but I am now stitching my block to my backing okay so I am just going to have a little bit of my batting showing there because I need to secure my block to my backing not going to show when I'm finished, you guys. I promise you. So I've got a little bit out here. Now, how could you do this if you don't have this tool? All you're going to do is put your machine back to regular machine and stitch it. It just has to be less than a quarter of an inch. And this is definitely an easy way to do it, but you could have it just as your regular machine. And what ruler is that that you're using? This is the one that I used a couple weeks ago 
and it's called the Sashley, or excuse me, Line Works Ditch Works number six. And I think it's actually called large when you are talking about it on, when on there. When you go online, there's like two different sizes and then there's a small and a large. And you want the yeah, large. Yeah, you want the large. And that is on your handout. And you made sure that you wrote large really big on there, I believe. I think I did. So you can put that in that package there because that's the circle and we're finished with that. Just dropped all your parts and pieces. Parts This is so easy to do, you guys. I just got it upside down and I'm still having no trouble with it. You want to make sure that it's laid good and flat. In other words, this fabric here that's not laying flat, make sure that's out good and flat. You can see I got a little bit much there. I need to turn that in so that I can come on down here. Make sure it's flat. I'm sorry, I'm laughing over here because Tracy said uh, that she's getting either so bit mail or so steady mail. Perfect. We love hearing that. Megan's just started helping me with shipping, so. Okay, I think there's also a little bit of confusion. Some people are asking if this is a preview for next steps. This is not okay. a preview for next okay. steps, so any of the templates that you're using are not needed for next steps. So, nope. this is just a separate Saturday project. Yep. This is like, I know you guys don't believe me, but this is like, it's three o'clock. What are we doing today, Megan? And I was like, I have got this cool design I've been wanting to do. That's what we're doing today, Megan. It might also be 2.30 and we're cleaning out. Hey, I found this really cool stash of fabric. What are we gonna do with it? You never know. And I am many times talking to myself because she's got her earbuds in listening to a book. And she's been working on t-shirt quilts like a crazy woman, trying to get them all finished. So now I'm just barely catching the edges on some of this. And you're going to think, how in the world is she going to measure that? Well, I am going to show you here in just a moment. Megan, you can get my cutting board up there on the ironing board for me. Oh, if I'm going to use that one, then I can use that right here on the table. Now, those of you that have been along with me for the from beginner to quilt, know that we started with those with an, an everything was bigger. The front was bigger, the back was bigger, the batting was bigger. That's not going to be the case with this one. It's just the batting and the backing are bigger. But that doesn't matter with what we're doing. And besides that, Many of you haven't been along for that ride. So what I'm going to be doing here, basically I've secured this outer edge. Anything less than a quarter of an inch 
is fine. And before you're done there, do you want to know where did you line up that ruler? Where were you lining it up so you know where to? I have just about an eighth of an inch off of the edge so that that's where it comes down and stitches through that middle. You can see it right here probably the best. So it's just so that this was off just a little bit. Now, before we quit that part of it, let me just show you because we're finished with that part of our quilting. Good thing, we're almost out of fabric. So what I'm gonna do is, bobbin thread, I'm sorry, is I'm gonna change to my other plate and foot. And I did what with that plate? There it is. And I'm gonna show you how you could do this with regular, okay? So, I'm going to take off my foot. I am not changing back on my needle because in just a few minutes we're going to be going through several layers and having that little bit larger needle is going to be a help to us. But what I could have done here was just use this quarter of an inch foot and split the difference there so that when I put this down, my edge of my front piece is halfway into that. So rather than having this edge against that edge, I've got it halfway in, so it's coming an eighth of an inch in. And I could have stitched all the way around doing that same thing. I know it's hard for you to believe, but it's actually almost faster to do it the other way. But this way would have been fine. Okay. So now I'm going to take this thread off. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to wind a bobbin of that. Yes, I am, because that doesn't match. I need, Megan, a thread that matches this brown now. Okay, well, I'm looking for that. Can you tell us again what size needle? Because I can't remember. Right now, I'm getting, yeah, I should be putting, all right, it's a 90 top stitch that I'm using right now. Well, look at you. Pick that out. Just, just like it was the easiest thing in the world. I told you. I'm a good little fairy. So I needed a brown that's going to match my backing. And we are going to be cutting these squares. I've already cut my sashing strips. You see on the fabric there, it's up in the top part under fabric one, that I have cut four strips one inch wide and four strips one and five eighths inches wide. And it says R S O. That means right side out. Okay, so those strips are already cut. And as soon as I get my blocks squared, we will be ready for those. So the fabric that I'm going to be having my thread show on, and I am going to change my needle because I don't like those bigger holes, is the brown that's our back. That'll be our sashing and our borders. All righty. Okay. 
So I've got my needle threaded. I got my machine set. And if you want to move your phone, honey, I'll get this so that we can do this. So I need one of my crosshair grid rulers up there. And that's not the one. There's one that has a bullseye in the center. It's the same size, but it's a newer ruler. Okay. So what I need with this is I need when I measure this, I need it to be a half inch bigger in both directions. Okay. So this is nine and a half. And I am going to now make it a 10 inch square. So that means from, and, and this is gonna be new to you guys, a little bit new to you. So I'm gonna turn this so you see it. That means if I need a 10 inch square, if I put this right through the center here, okay? Right through that center, then out here, I'm gonna cut five inches. And I just did this backwards. Let me think a second. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And right here is five and a half and there's five. So I'm going to turn my ruler to get it to full inches, which is this way. And I am going to put my five inch line right on that center there. Now what I'm gonna do so you can see this easier is I'm gonna chalk that for you. So I'm just gonna take a straight edge and you can see this spot right here through the center and up here at the top. So I'm going this way, I'm gonna turn this, and this time I'm gonna be here and here, and I'm gonna go like that. Now, I probably wouldn't draw those lines, except for the fact that it makes it easier for you. And I really didn't need that big one now that I'm thinking about it, because I'm gonna take this one, and right there's my five, I'm gonna put it there, and there, cutter please. And I am going to start right here, a little bit below that five, cut that way, and this way. Okay, so that part's cut off. I'm gonna reposition this so that my five, which is right there, my five is right here. My five is right there. Come back here and cut this off. Now for some of you, that's probably like, there is too much movement there. The next one, I'll show you a little different way to do it. I think this is the easiest to get it exact. So I'm over here on the side and I can rotate this back. It's kind of close in here with my sewing machine, but I got it. And we've got one more corner here to do. So I got to get that on the five. Should be right there in the center. There we go. So now I have this perfect 10 inch square. And I'll show you right here on my board, if we could see through our fabric, we'd be able to get that perfect 10 inch square right like that. Yes, there's extra out here. That's gonna get stitched in. All right. 
Let's do this again. So did you only have to do one side at a time? Right here's my five inches. I'm just gonna line that five inch right along there and cut. Go to the next side. I've still drawn that plus on there. I'm gonna have to look at it. I hope I've got enough. I may have to cut it a little smaller. That top may have pulled in more than I thought. We'll see. So obviously this is a lot less work than using that small one. Oh, I guess I've already done that. So here's what I'm looking at. Is that going to be enough and it is not so i'm gonna have to take this down so you may want to make a note of that i'm gonna have to take this down an eighth of an inch on each side in order for it to catch so i'm going to line up right here and I'm only taking off that eighth of an inch. Obviously knowing that the next two squares I will do that to begin with. So don't panic. This is at four and seven eighths. So the question is if they want to do this later and have different sizes they just need a half inch in both directions, so like a fourth of an inch of the batting shows all the way around. Is that correct? Yeah, I'll be explaining that, and it's in generic terms on that. I'm gonna, I will get there. So this right here, I'm putting at four and seven eighths instead of five because that pulled in more than I thought it would. And you're not gonna know that when you start out, you have to adjust as you go because it's not like you can make bigger squares and then cut them back. That's not gonna work either. Now I've got to see on this one if that's gonna, I'm trying to think if I've done all four sides is what I'm actually doing. Okay, so we've got that one done. So now we're coming off to this one. And as I said, I'm just taking like an eighth of an inch off of each side. There's one. I never can cut that very good sitting down. We can't have a quarter of an inch batting showing here because that won't get caught up in the next part of this. So that's why it has to be trimmed. I think this is the last one. All right, so you notice what I did on that. On the front, I'm measuring from four and seven eighths. Four and three fourths, you guys. That's gonna be the perfect way to do it. So from each side, from the middle to each side, it's four and three-fourths. 
And that way we'll have absolutely no issues. Our squares are all square. So please make that note. I should have just done it that way to begin with. Four and three fourths. So if you think you've seen this square about three times, you have now, because I am just trimming away and trimming away and finally made up my mind to make it four and three fourths. Hey, Megan, what's that measurement? Four and three fourths. You got it. It's four and three fourths from the center. Perfect, perfect. Whole lot easier when we get to the next step. And that just goes to show you, which my grandma used to say shows to go you. Anyway, sometimes you have to make some decisions on the fly, especially when you've done a little bit of quilting and it's pulled up. I think I did this side, but I shall check it. Yes, I did. But aren't they going to be pretty together? Four and three fourths. There we go. Don't give me nasty faces just because I screwed up, you guys. It would have been a hard thing to do had I not changed this. We had an interesting question here from Denise. Is your cutting mat self-healing? Yeah, this is one of the Martelli mats, and I love it because fabric doesn't stick to it. This happens to be one that rotates. And this stuff right here. I have a big basket behind me that I put this all in, and when it gets full, I just get a pillowcase, a cheap pillowcase, or I make one. Usually it's cheaper to buy one. And I just stuff all that stuff in there, and I sew it shut and take it to the Humane Society. So that's just an idea. All right, so if I remember, Megan, we had this put together. Like that. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. So this is the way this is going to be get to get put together, you guys. It's just like this. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to join these together. Okay. So this one right here, I've got my machine set for just a standard quarter of an inch. And I don't know where all my little pieces are. There we go. And so I want you guys to know right here, we need to make a correction. Okay. It says four pieces, one and five eighths by 12. You only need two of those. And you only need two of these. And then you need one piece, one and five eighths by 20. And you need one piece, one by 20. So two here, I'll correct this and put it up if you want to re-download it, but there's two here, right there is two, and then two here, 
And then in between there, I need one that is one and five eighths by 20 and one that is one by 20. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be stitching this. This is the method of quilt as you go. So this is the one inch piece. I lay it behind the one that goes on the left. This is the left, this is the right. And then I take the one that's folded and lay it on top. Now you see I've got extra up here. So I lay that on top. So what I'm gonna be doing is starting off the edge with thread that matches. Oh, you gotta put in bobbin thread if you're gonna do this, you guys. And thankfully I have a machine that's smart enough to tell me, hey lady, you need some bobbin thread. So I'm gonna take this, making sure they're all matched on my right side. You can see this is the one that's one inch. This is the one that's folded in half that was an inch and five eighths to begin with. And I'm stitching onto my fabric a quarter of an inch away. And you can see why I took that time to resize all those because otherwise it wouldn't have gotten caught in. Now this is part of my salvage. It's gonna get cut off. Don't panic, it's not gonna matter. I'm sewing off of there and I'm cutting it. Now this piece is going to go on here like this. So we haven't ironed the lines off yet. Let me iron the lines off. And I don't know if I have any of this left or not, Megan, but I'm gonna need a strip, an inch and five eighths, one and five eighths by, um, uh, by the width of the fabric, the brown. I made a mistake and cut it wrong. An inch and five eighths of the brown. My iron's not hot, so hang on a second here. So this is going to go right like this. So in order to make that work, we're going to flip this like so. So you're looking at the back of it and we are going to bring this one inch piece around like that. And now this has to match right here. That needs to match. And then we're going to stitch this a quarter of an inch from the edge. So start off the edge. And down here, it should match here also, which it does right down there. And stitch off the edge here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be go going to the ironing board and I'm gonna press this flat. This was a quarter of an inch, this was a quarter of an inch. And so these edges will meet just right up together. So I press all that flat and then I'm gonna press this over right on top of that. And that's how that's going to join. So I'll get this pressed and then we'll move on. I 
I'm cutting this one and what? One and five eighths. All right. So now what I did was this is the back. You can see my nice matching colors and whatever. This is turned over this way and I'm going to edge stitch just on this side. Now, for those of you that have been sewing for quite a while, that's probably not that big of a deal. But this makes it so much easier. This is called Stitch Perfection Tape. It's by the same company that makes that pink tape that I use for my template gates. But I am just putting this right inside of that line that you saw that I stitched earlier. And it's a double stick water soluble tape. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that off of there. I'm gonna press it down cause it's sticky. And then I'm gonna just take a straight pin to get that separated so that I can get this other back off of there. And that's the hardest part of it. And I'm just gonna take this and peel this back And then this will just stick right over that. So now all I have to do is stitch right along that edge. Doesn't look like I pulled that one back far enough. Ooh, that was the hardest thing I've done all day. I bet it was. And I'm just gonna stitch right along that edge. So let me get you guys down there so you can see it. That does not add any weight and the first time it's laundered, it's going to be gone. Did you leave, did you put the tape on your list? I did not put the tape on the list. I forgot that. So, so the, the tape is not on the list. You'll have to write that in. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this on the bottom two. Now I'm going to give Megan one more instruction. This one gets cut to an inch wide. Not both of them, just that one. You guys didn't see that look I got. So this is my bottom row, like so. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put this one on the top. And a one inch on the bottom, both of them facing right sides up. So lay this in place. Lay this on top of it. I've made it so it's a little bit longer. So you can start stitching off the edge. And we're gonna make all of these even. My next block is going to go like this. So all I need to do is pull this piece out. Flip this one underneath, wrong side up. Got some lint on there. Top edge right here, even. Side edge, even. Start off the edge.
So now I've got this together and I'm going to press that. You got any questions? <laughs> nope. But Bev says we didn't need to see that look. They heard it. Oh, did they? <laughs> All right. So maybe my quilting fairy um, job offers that I hired out for just got canceled. I don't know. I told them I was hiring. I was hiring out. Oh. They just had to fly me out and house me and feed me. But I might have just lost those job offers now. So you can see I'm just putting it right along where that stitching is. Because there's my stitching right there. I'm going to cut this so that it's even down there at the bottom. Make sure I press that on. I am thankful to one of my customers for showing me this little hint because it does make it very, very easy. Those of you who've been sewing for quite a while, you may not feel like you need that, but I can tell you it does make it easier. I come to the middle first and push that over and then just work my way to either end. It's already been pressed, so it kind of knows where it needs to go. And then we're just gonna go right in that edge there so that you're just catching the very edge So here's what it looks like on the right side, and there's what it looks like on the wrong side. I can't even, got to get it in there so you can see it. You are going to see a few of those stitches, but if they match, it's like, really? Does that really, really matter? So that's what the back side looks like. Now, we got to do this long one, and that's the one that I forgot. So Megan went ahead and made those for me. And I will tell you, when I cut these sashing strips, I press my fabric first with starch savvy so that they will have a little bit of body to them. And I'm just now pressing one, so hang on. That's where I messed up in telling you guys. I don't know what I thought I was doing because once you put two together, then you have a long piece through the middle. So just to clarify, and maybe you'll do this when you get back to the machine as well. The one inch strips are Go. stitched to the back. They're on the back, but they're right sides up. And the one and five eight strips gets folded in half. in half and then stitched to the top. Right. Okay, so Tracy, you wrote it correctly. And then Norma would like if you could repeat the, the corrections, I believe. I will definitely do that. Do you see my blue handled scissors? That you just had out? That I just had out. And the reason I want them is because they are serrated, but I'll just use my cutting board instead. So I'm going to just take my cutting mat. The serrated scissors would make it so the stitch lays real. So you can use either. I'm going to do this right now. You can see I'm laying that right along there. And I'm going to just cut this off. And that's pretty thick. So don't hesitate to get yourself. That's why I was going to use those particular scissors. Because you want that cut off there. I'm going to go to the other side and you notice I may be cutting off just a sliver right there or in this case I'll use my scissors so that I can get right up to that. Either way is going to work. And at this point, it's always interesting 
because you have to almost take a double look to see which is front and which is back other than you've already done the quilting here. So I'm gonna trade you stuff here. This is my lower section and this is my upper section. Now, why does this matter? We want to put the upper section so that this is going to flap down. It's just going to look better. And some of this, I can't really even tell you why it looks better. It's just that design training gives you that information and tells you that. It's kind of like on a quilt. Your eyes aren't real happy if you put the top and the bottom on for borders and then add the sides. The, the, your eyes want the sides on first and then the top border and the bottom border. So I've got this one placed here. I've got my inch and five eighths pressed in half. So this is my fold here on the left and it's open on the right. I've got that all together. I'm going to start off that edge. I'm going to lay this underneath there. I am so glad I took the time to cut that extra off. Remember, we did that to four and seven eighths from this, or excuse me, four and three fourths from the center. And I just make sure, like I said, I, I press this first before I even cut it. With starch savvy so that it had some body to it. And I don't want to stretch those at all. Now, here's my little hint. I need to match these up. All right, the easiest way that I know is to pull this out right here. And if you don't wanna go press it, that's okay, it doesn't matter. I then take my little roller here and do that just so it lays good and flat. And then I'm gonna take a fine line marker and a straight edge And I am going to lay it against this edge right here and make sure I draw that exact. Do the same thing with this. Draw that exact because that's how you're going to match up this piece over here. Remember, this is my top, this is my bottom, and I can then turn this under behind and get that matched right up. See it sticking up there? I can match that right up. Get one of my pins. And now when I do this, I need to kind of walk back from that seam. If you had one that had multiple seams, then you would line up multiple seams. I'm walking myself back from that. And you can see right here how that's off. I'm going to get that so that it's right across there. After I get started, then I can pull this into place. And if there's any easing in it, just work a little bit at a time. You can see right here, there's just a little bit of extra. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of work that in. It's not like you have to stretch it or anything because it can't be that much extra unless you cut something incorrectly. Now we're getting right up here. 
to where I don't want to stitch over my pin. So I'm going to lay this one out so I can take the pin out and sew about that much. And then I've got to work down here. So I'm going to pull it up into your vision so you can see it. This one's actually easier because you've got it on your table and you can just kind of lay it across there and get that in place. Before you go any farther, check and see how you did. Did we get it across there when we put this across? Is it going to be across? I don't think I got it. So you want to make sure that goes across there. So I'm going to do my pressing. Would a small amount of water soluble glue, like in the pen, hold that intersection in place as well? I think you can use that, yeah. Actually, Leonie does all of this with that water soluble glue that she irons in place. I just don't much like messing with that glue, and so that's why I've done this. And this, obviously, this method, you don't have any hand stitching. You can see my intersections right here on the back. They're already done. I just got to figure out here on the front. But some of these methods for the quilt as you go joining, they actually have hand stitching. Ooh, mm -mm. If I can do anything without hand stitching, I'm gonna do it. So now I can't hardly see that stitching in that section, but I can down here. I got a piece of thread there that's needing to come out. Can't hardly see it in that blue, but we can see it down here. Now at this point, you could bind this and be finished with it. I want to make it a little bit larger, so I'm going to show you how I do borders that even after it's all made, you could go back and quilt in those. So hopefully you don't have to leave us, but if you do, we'll see you on the reruns. So at this point, I want to get this right across from there. So I'm looking at it just exactly how I want to stitch it. So if it was right across on the back, it should be right across on the front. So that shouldn't be an issue. Now, some people prefer to stitch down the other side. I don't think it's necessary necessary but it's totally up to you the other side doesn't need stitching it would just be so that it looks exactly like this side so it's like i said it's totally up to you what you want to do there how wide is the sticky tape you I'm using half inch. It also comes in quarter inch. You could use either for this so job. Up against the line of stitching. So in other words, if you were using, I'll peel this back, you would put it up against this line of stitching and it would go back to about there. It would still hold everything, 
in the same place. Yes, I'm using this stuff for a lot of things. And it just makes it so much easier. So now we have got that all together. I'm going to cut this off on either end here. And again, I'm going to tell you something that is part of designing. And that is that this crossbar piece here, the cross should go this way, not this way. Again, this is broken up and our eyes don't like it. So this is the way this should be. And we're going to put a border on either side. And then we'll put the top and the bottom on. So what are we going to do with this? We're going to do another quilt as you go method. All right. So I have cut my three inch strip wide of batting. I thought I had cut three inches wide. Do I have more pieces somewhere, Megan? Nope. Well, honey, I need you to cut me some three inch wide. Those aren't three inch wide. Did you hear how she answered me, you guys? No, hun, they're not. I evidently didn't cut those. So while she's doing that, how many of these am I cutting? Um, I believe I will need. Let me measure. Four strips. Four strips, three inches wide. Don't cut them in half or anything. I think that'll do it. Okay, so these are my binding strips right here. So I have cut for my binding. I was going to say, I thought I had it on there. It's four strips, two and a half inches wide. And what I'm going to do with this. I am using what is called the bound to fit tool. So all of my strips are right side up. I'm laying my tool. You can see that there's a little ridge right here on the tool. I think if I point it that way, you can see there's that ridge. So what I'm doing is I'm laying that ridge right up against the edge of my fabric. And I am going to cut straight beside here. You can see I cut that off and then I'm going this direction. So I'm getting my perfect 45. I'm going to go to the other ends. And I'm going to line them up. I'm going to cut this way and then this way. These two should be right. Let me know if these two aren't. And then I can easily go ahead and join these. And all I'm going to do is take one of these 
and turn one of the other ones over like this. So as you can see, this is going to match down here. It's going to match up there. I'm going to put a pin in to hold that together. And when I go to stitch this, you can see that it starts right where the edge of that. And I'll show you here in just a second. And this is why you want to get your machine set up for a perfect quarter of an inch. Because right there where that tip is, is where my stitching was. So now when this opens up, it's laid perfect. Now this is binding. This is not a border, but you could do it on your borders. This is going to be pressed open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other end of that same piece. And I think I figured that it only takes three, but I put down there four so that you'd have enough. And I'm going to do the same thing. Stitch that quarter of an inch. And then what I will do is press that one open because I've got three pieces here. And then this is going to get pressed in half. And I'm going to show you a tool that will do that. But let's go back to this other part first since we're not even ready to put on our binding. And again, this is a side and that's what we're going to put on first. So I don't know what you meant, Megan. You think they're not three inches or more? No, I noticed as I was cutting that it wasn't on the bolt as nicely as I thought it was. So they might be cut wonky. Well, we don't do wonky. That one is three there and three there. No, so we're probably three inches. It's just I don't know if it's cut on straight of grain. Oh, okay. Well, I think we're gonna say it is. So here we go, you guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one strip. And yes, wonky is a real word in our sewing room. It is? It is. Well, it is when we want it wonky, but if we don't want it wonky, it's not a word. It's still a word. Okay, whatever. So I'm putting one right side up and it sticks off just a little bit. And one right side down on top. So what I've got is a strip right side up. My quilt, so to speak, and I have a strip right side down. Well, that's a lovely pen. That's a wonky pen, you guys. That's what that is. That was a wonky pen. I need to come up farther because that's not there. So let's just pretend that we're all sitting in the sewing room and we're working and Donnell happens to be the one talking because hopefully you feel like we're just having a friendly conversation here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take that three inch strip of batting lay it on top and all this is going to get stitched together. So this is how you can do an add-on border. And the reason you want the batting on top is because there's going to be a little bit of a fullness uh, because you're going to turn it to the outer edge. And so if that's the case, we want that fullness to be so that that ridge is on the top, not giving you a divot. Now there are times when I do this that I use the fusible fleece instead of the batting. It doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. The fusible fleece doesn't stretch out or anything. And really your batting doesn't either. You can see since I've cut this in three inches, it's laying right there. So 
So again, I've got a layer face down in my batting and then a layer on the back. And I'm gonna come right here. And in this case, I am gonna back stitch. And then I'll go ahead and I'll cut my thread here. And so we're gonna be doing this on both sides. And then this is gonna come out this way. And this is gonna come out this way. So we have added on our border. Now, before we go any farther, obviously we could put the other side on, but we wanna get this laid nice and flat so that it's together. And this is where, when I find it, I'm gonna be showing you guys so much of it. I have a little four by six cutting mat, and this is where it would be perfect, but I can't find it. So I'll have to use it this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that straight edge, I'm gonna line it up perfect. Megan, can you get this? No, I got it, there we go. So that's straight, you wanna make sure you're straight. And then we're just gonna cut this off, just like that. We'll come to the other end, get this laid back without stretching anything. That's really wonky, and that's what she was talking about, of being on that bolt wonky. So we have that side finished. You can see on the back how that's been added on there. We're going to go to the opposite side. We did this one. We're going to go over here. See, yes, I've got plenty from that strip. Patsy wants to know what would happen if you didn't sew the batting, but just laid it in between the border layers? Well, it wouldn't be connected. So it's totally up to you. That's really not that big of a difference. It's going to really be cool when we quilt it because it's gonna look like a piped edge right there when we quilt that down. So I know it's getting long here, so I'm gonna try and speed this up a little bit, but I do wanna step-by-step -step talk you through it again. So I'm lining that up on the back, on the side opposite of what I just did. The same with the top one. And what she's saying is after I would have stitched this, then I just lay this in here and turn it over. I know where I'm going, so I'm kind of excited about this little piping thing. Now that I got that started there, it just kind of holds it so that I can now come back and add this in it was kind of hard managing all of that on the other side so that's why I did that that way I don't know if you saw me just about sew my fingernail in right there that would not have been good. What I'm doing here is making sure that I've got my wide enough out here to the edge. How many strips did you cut me, hon? Four. Good. I don't think I'm going to need all four, but it's always good to know I got them if I need them. So I got two sides out of one strip. I'm 
I'm going to pull these out and lay this out. Can you set my cutting mat up there for me, hon? Up here? Yep. Yep. And then down here on this end, now what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything is laying like it's supposed to because once we put these other two pieces on, we really can't go back and do anything about it. So you just want to pull that out, make sure we've got it cut straight. And do the same thing on this. And so now we're going to be doing this long edge. So I've got one here. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead get that all held together. Lay your batting strip in there. And now we got everything secure so that we can just work with our layers. I'm going to need two more three inch strips, Megan. Okay, well, I'm checking some questions. Okay. What's the widest door you can do this with? I could do anything I wanted because. I'm going to end up coming back and putting quilting through it. So, you know, I could do anything I wanted. It's going to get secured with quilting. Would it be advisable to use a walking clip for this project aside from the mud? Um, mine is what's called the walking foot. It's an AccuFeed foot. This is, it's more than a quarter of an inch foot. Okay, so Sandy has the question, would you press the border strips after sewing and then before adding the top and bottom strips? Anything that you want to do that makes it easier is perfectly fine. 
It's just that right now for me, and I would do the pressing, I would turn this over and I would press it. I'm trying to save time just because of respect for your time. But yes, that would be fine to do that. I'm pulling this out and getting it to that point and then I can press it all at the same time. But yes, it would be fine to do that. So you can see down here how this worked. I've got this so it's laid flat. And so what I'm gonna do here is again, pull this out, secure that in place. It kind of holds each other down just because of the fact that there's batting in there. I'm making this long down here so that it is straight with that edge because I want this to be a perfect corner. I don't want it to be, you know, wonky. So I've got that corner done. I'm gonna to come to this corner. And in this case, I'm gonna press this out like that. Lay that up against there. And there's a little bit of batting that's even gonna get cut off. I've got just one more piece to attach to it. And then I'm gonna show you what I would do with this edge. So that little edge there kind of gives you a piped effect. So let me make the corrections while we're waiting on these strips. Here for borders, it says two, three by 21, you're gonna need four. And here where it says three by 28, you're gonna need four. Sorry about that. Four and four. Change those numbers to four. And you guys didn't know that you were my guinea pigs tonight. I didn't mean for that to be that way, but it kind of came out that way. Then you're going to change this one that says two, or it actually said four. You're going to change it to two, one and five eighths by two, or by 12 inches. And then you're going to add in a one, one and five eighths inch by 20 inch. And then you're going to have two one by 12 inches for sashing and one one inch by 20 inches for sashing. And guess what? This, I think we're going to be able to do three, but I'm going to leave it at four. It should be correct. Okay. So the rest of this, I believe, is okay. So are these my three inches? Yep. So I got a question from Linda. Would it be possible to add two color borders and two sizes on the border, but then just add the one size of batting to fit the width of the two? If I did it that way, I would probably put my borders together first. I think that's what she's saying. Could you put the two borders together? Yes. And whatever that new measurement is, that's the width of your yes. batting. Yes, that's correct. So here we go. This is straight up here. You don't want that to be curved or anything. We're laying this one on like this. The other one. And we're gonna stitch to get them started. And then I'm gonna back stitch clear back up to the top so that I now have those ready to go. I'm going to lay this on there and then 
my body. So once I get that going and held in place, I can get all of these lined up. And yes, this is where some of you ask about a walking foot. Mine is my AccuFeed foot, so it's the same thing. Just remember not to stretch any of those, the batting or any of those strips. Woo, almost stitched that double, you guys. That would not have been good. So down here, I wanna make sure these are laying out nice and flat. I may even put a pen in there to hold all that together. Lay this back on top. Don't want to sew over that. So now what we're going to do, get our cutting board back up here. This is from the back. I'm just going to get that pulled up there. Line this right along that fabric. difference between fusible fleece and fusible batting? Yes, fusible fleece is more um, compact and um, doesn't change shape at all. So we're on the right side here. I've got everything pulled up. I'm actually not only lining up here, I'm getting a line on my ruler that's going across where that seam is. So there you go, Megan. What I'm going to do now is I am going to pull this all out and I am going to stitch like an eighth of an inch from the edge to hold all of those layers together. I've got about 10 more minutes for those of you watching the clock and we should be pretty much good to go. I will not have quilted that border. Now this is a little wacky here. Yes, yes it is. So wacky that I'm giving it just a little bit of a shake. My preference would have been that little four by six mat that I can't find. Now I'm just sewing off the edge and cutting it. You can turn, it doesn't really matter. Because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this in just a second. So you guys have never seen me do this. Yeah, 
I'm going to do my lightning speed here. And each time I'm pulling this out from the back, so I've got all of my layers caught. I would wait until next week to show you the rest, but Megan and I are going to be gone for the next two weeks. We will be teaching in Colorado. But you got to reach back here and keep pulling this out. So yes, pressing would make that a little bit easier. This is the edge my binding's going to go on, so definitely wanted to secure it. Last side, and then I'm going to show you how I square up my corners before I start, because it will happen to you just like it's happened to me. Oops, I've already stitched it. All right, we're one step ahead of the game. So now what I'm going to do is take my mat, and I am going to get you guys up here where you can see. And I need one of my little square ups that I sent over there. The little one or the it doesn't one? matter, just a square up. And you could even use your um, crosshair square to do this, you guys, because you have lines you can use. And I'm just putting it along this side. Sorry, my voice is going. And I'm taking off that little bit on the corner because I want my corners to be square. Where can they get the fork pins and your serrated scissors? On my website. On the link that's on the handout? Yes. Okay. It's on the SoBiz link. You can see that one was real small compared to the others there. Squaring it up from this side and that side. And there's just a little bit that needs to come off of there. Okay. So now, while I still have this set up this way with this color thread and everything, what I want to do is I want to stitch out a little ways farther than that quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my ruler
this is kind of like template quilting because I'm setting it on an eighth right on my ruler. I think you can see that there. And I'm gonna put my foot right beside it. I'm gonna move it down and I'm gonna stitch right beside that edge there. Because what that is doing, as you can see, it's giving me a little bit bigger than a quarter. And it's making that kind of a little bit raised there. I think it's kind of cool. I've done this before. If you want to draw a line, you can. But I do my best just to stay right beside my ruler. And down here, we're obviously going to cross that. And you're going to want to make sure because it's actually like 3 8 So we might just pivot and check it. Oh, it's lucky that time, you guys. see how lucky I get this time. Nope, need one more stitch. So if you thought you had to be in ruler work to do this, you can see that I'm doing it without it. I do have my grips on the back of my ruler, so it does grip it better that way. So I'm back around, here's where I started. And I'm going to just back stitch. My thread matches so well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my needle and I'm going to bring those threads out and I'm going to secure them by bringing the top to the bottom and then burying the tails because I just want to make sure that it stays in there. And I want you to see what this looks like. Hopefully you can see that up close. So this just gives us almost a welt appearance because that's where your batting is thick in there. And so as you turn the corner, you get that kind of a welt-like look on each of those. Okay, so now let me show you how we are going to put that binding on. If you've already seen that, then you sure don't need to watch it again. Mary Ann's got a question. If she wanted to add quilting to those borders, would now be the time to do that? You can quilt now or you can quilt later. Um, I would prefer to quilt now, to be honest with you, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to take up your time, but I do want to show you how to put this border on. So this is going to get pressed in half this way. And so, um, maybe I need my sashing tools and I thought I had them still laid out. 
Well, and I moved them this morning because they were on right here. They are. So this is what's called the Sasher. They come as a set of 10, or you can buy the one you use the most. I'm going to be using the one and a quarter the most. So that would be if I was only buying one, that's the one I would use. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to fold this in half. And then that makes this that's two and a half now an inch and a quarter. And we go through this like it was a belt loop. And this is actually heat resistant. And so we are going to be able to use our iron right up against this little piece. So I'm going to clear off the ironing board so I can show you how this works. We're going to just pull you over here so you can see. And so right back there. I have this ready to go and I'm going to use one of those fork pins. And so this is all ready to start. So we're just going to start by putting this down, the iron down. And we can just go right along like this. And that sasher tool you can put the iron right up against it. Now, I don't have as long enough space here for you to be able to see it, so I'm going to probably start and stop more than you would. And then I'm just down here at the other end getting it together. And then we just slide that along there. And just like that, We've got this pressed in half for our binding. Now there's a lot of uses for this. You can see this right here. I need to press this seam open. Right there. And I'm going to press this over. So this is just going to come down here to get started and it goes right through all of that join. So we're moving it again to get our fork pin in place. Slide that up. There are some knockoffs out there that are not made of the right stuff so that when you put your iron up to it, it melts it right up to your iron. So don't participate in those knockoffs. We're having a ton of problems with knockoffs of our templates. And then when people try to take the class, they're not marked the correct way and they can't follow what instructions we're giving them. Make sure you're getting authentic. The knockoff people are so creative, ha, that they actually are taking our videos, showing some of the things that we have done because they're not creative enough to do it themselves. But this is a tool, Sasher tool by Pauline, who is an Australian. And again, these are available on my link. And you can get just the one. But it's so much faster. You can see I'm already at the end.
And just like that. I can see where it was wonky on the bolt. There we go. Okay. So what we want to do with this is we want to leave about 20 inches open in the middle. That's almost the whole thing. And we want to overlap a little bit. Now here's what the trick is on this. You can either take it from the back to the front or the front to the back. I am going to take it from the back to the front. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. Got some threads that need to be pulled off. And I need to leave open a big section. But before I start, I want to make sure I have got enough. So I'm just basically measuring my four. Oh, yeah, I'm good. I've got plenty with three pieces. So I'm on the back. I'm allowing about, oh, I don't know, 12 inches or so. And I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to use this at a quarter of an inch. You could come in as much as 3 8 I think I will come in 3 8 And you're going to start, and then you're going to backstitch. And you can see uh, this is the middle. So I'm leaving quite a bit open down there. And what I want to do is I want to check to make sure, and wow, this is a great example of what you don't want to do. I just kind of turned this to see, and look what happens. I get down to this corner, and that's where my join is. That would be super, super bulky. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to just take this. I couldn't have shown you that any easier. Because I never want those joins to be on the corners. That happened to me once, and it was so bulky down there. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back myself up about five or six inches so that that won't be the situation. Okay, so I said I'm doing it three-eighths. So I've got to have that out here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch to the corner, but I'm going to stop. I think I'll slow down. Three-eighths from the corner. So here I come. And this line right there is a quarter of an inch. So I want to stop at the front of my toe. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot so that I can make this diagonal. You can see my corner here. I'm going to come at a diagonal out to that corner, and I'm simply going to cut my thread. So then I'm going to pivot this or turn this back so it's just like that. Okay, because I stitched it a diagonal, it's easy enough to do. So that's going to lay like that. And I'm going to turn this back so that this edge is laying flat along there. And then I'm going to turn the whole project, start stitching, back stitch. Oops, Donnell, you messed up. We're doing three eighths, not a quarter. So I just need to come over here. And back stitch. Line this right up on the edge, three eighths. If you've not seen this method, you're really going to like it. And this is actually, this part of it is shown when you order the bound to fit 
tool, there is a video on there showing how to do this. So I'm coming to that corner again. I want to stop when that toe is, there we go, because this is where it would be if it was a quarter. I'd be coming like one more stitch. I'm going to lift this up, stitch at the diagonal right off of there, and cut that thread. Turn this so that it's like that, and then back on itself again. Remember that we're doing three eighths. Okay, Donnell, I think we will. Back stitch. And now that join is around the corner. It starts right here. And so that's going to make it so that we don't have to have that right in that corner section. If you were to take this foot off and you actually used your um, like standard foot, it's probably three eighths of an inch from the center needle to the edge. So that's something that you could, you know, not have to kind of guess like I am here. So we've got lots of people saying they're going to miss us next Saturday. So if you're really missing us, you can always go back on the watch YouTube something YouTube old Facebook page, or you can go back on Donnell's YouTube page, and you can always rewatch us. We're, we've got a whole year's worth of videos on there now. So if you're really missing us, maybe there's one that you missed a while back, you can go check those out. So back at the diagonal, so that this is straight across here. And then turn this so that that edge meets. I just love how that piping, or it's not piping, but how that stands up there. It just makes a really cool look for you. So this is the last corner. We're gonna turn this, stitch off, flip this back so it's straight across this way. So we want to leave a big space open here. So I'm going to sew about two more inches and we're going to back stitch. Now, if you've not seen this before, I think you're going to really like it. Now I can make it so my join is dead center, but it's easier to make it so that my join is in the center of this opening between my fingers here. So that's going to be about right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this piece down and I'm going to flip it back right here. I'm going to use either just my fingers or I'm going to use something to get that piece so that it's creased so I can tell where it's at. You can see right there in the inside where that's at. Okay. 
So that's laid back there. This piece I'm going to bring up to that and right beside it, not across it, not away from it, but right beside it, I fold that piece back. And I'm going to do the same thing. It's easy to do one at a time because it's just going to make it so that you're working with just a smaller section there. Now, I've got way too much on this side. I don't have much on that side, so I'm okay. But I'm going to cut this extra off there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this bound to fit tool. This is what it was really designed for. What I did a while ago is just something that I found makes it so much easier. And the instructions are right on the tool. So you can see what I've just done here. So I'm going to take this off so you can see it. And I'm going to turn it this way. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to take the bound to fit tool. And right on the tool, there's this etch line. OK, and it says right here that it goes on the fold. So I'm going to sit that right on that fold. And another perfect time for my little two inch or four inch by six inch mat. You know what, Megan, I think I'm just going to get me a new one since I can't find it. So I'm going to lay that right there. Get it up where y'all can see. Here's my fold. There's my tool that goes right on that fold. I hold that in place. I'm going to cut it the same way as I did. So that piece is ready to join to the other piece. And so there's my fold on that one. And looking at the right side of the fabric on this one, I take this tool and turn it around, rotate it, and put that line right on top of that fold. Now remember, this is a raised edge over here, so we can get that right there. And this is designed for two and a half inches. So I've got that laid there. This is not the smartest thing in the world to do. I'm cutting backwards from anything I know, but I got it. And now I'm cutting that tip and half of my thumb, not really. So now what we're gonna do before we stitch it, because I have been known to get these flipped and flopped and they don't stitch right. We are gonna take this together Right like that's the way it's going together. So we're going to fold this. This is why you need to have a good 12 to 15 inches open. And I'm simply going to put in what I would call like a little mock quarter of an inch and make sure that when that's stitched, it's going to do right. And you can see that it is. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this out of my way. And I'm going to take this and stitch a quarter of an inch right from that point. And you can see my little fold just kind of lays right where it's supposed to. And get this piece. Right down there. And just because it'll be easier for me to show you, I'm going to lay this on this good flat surface here and open this up and use my roller. Remember, we were working on the back, so I'm going to come right back here 
Start that 3 8 inch. And here's my join piece. Back to where I started and I overlapped so I can just cut that now. And when I turn this around to the front, I will machine stitch it. Some of you might want to hand stitch it. If you're going to hand stitch it, I would have stitched it to the front and turned it to the back. So let's start before a corner here so you can see how this is just going to come over and overlap that. The 3 8 inch worked perfect. I will then be able to go right back and do a stitch. You could either do a narrow zigzag you could do a straight stitch, whatever you wanted. Now you notice I just kind of left that corner and I came around here because I'm going to get some of that laid out right. Work my way back to this corner. And then I'm just going to push that in there. And then this will go up like that and turn back like this to form your miter. Now the other side is already forming its miter because we made it. We told it it had to do that. And there's really no reason that you need to stitch this in. You can just stitch when you go around. So you can see that nice miter there. Can they see that, Megan? Because I can't tell on the screen. Can they see it over there? I think it's just as good as on dark fabric, but yeah, they should be able to. Okay, this is thread that's got to come out of there, but um, you can see how that forms that miter. And then on the back, it's also mitered. So that's where I would be working from those corners. And then obviously go ahead and, you know, work around the rest of it to the next corner or whatever. But that's going to be your binding. Now, that is all you really have to do. But you've got a perfect area here that you could do some decorative stitching in. I shouldn't say decorative because we're quilting. You could go ahead and do some quilting in here. This has got a lot of potential. Let me see what the area is that you can work with. You've got two inches, actually an inch and three quarters because of this. So you've got an inch and three quarters that you could do something in if you wanted to. This would be cool to just continue around this at about three eighths of an inch apart doing straight stitches. Or like I said, because batting only has to be stitched every four inches, you're pretty much good just like we are right now. So with that, I hope that I have taught you some new things tonight and shown you some different things that you can do with some of the tools that you already have and maybe inspired you to get a few new things such as maybe a six inch, excuse me, a six point crosshair grid. Um, and obviously we showed you the ruler work stitch, what's it called? My um, ditch works um, template. There it is. It's hiding in there. My ditch works template that you can use the line works ditch works. And um, I will get the corrections on there and um, you can re download that front page if you want to. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you again on June 19th. Have a great holiday weekend. Bye now.